Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. This video is about the correct technique for corneal suture removal. When I think back about my residency days, uh, I realized that the very first surgical procedure that I got to do as a resident was a suture removal case. So if there are any residents watching this video, there are two books that I'd like to recommend. The first is called Eye Trauma by Bradford Shingleton and the second is called Eye Surgery by George Eisner. Both these books have really helped me to understand the concepts of eye surgery when it comes to tissue handling and suturing techniques when I was a resident. Eye Trauma was first written in 1991 and I don't think there is another edition after that and Eye Surgery by George Eisner is even older, it was written in 1980. Even though these books were written in a bygone era, they are very much relevant even today and every ophthalmological surgical resident should read these two books. I would highly recommend them. So let's get on with the topic of suture removal as you've already seen by the title of this video. So I'm going to start with this diagram that I've picked up from Eye Trauma by Shingleton. As you can see, if you look at the upper half of this picture on panel A, this depicts uh, the way an ideal corneal suture should be placed. If you assume this vertical line to be the corneal wound, you can see that the suture is at around 90% depth and it is equidistant from the wound margins on both sides. Ideally, the distance from A to B should be between 1.5 to 2 millimeters when it comes to suturing a corneal wound. It goes without saying that 10-0 monofilament or 11-0 monofilament nylon sutures are most commonly used for corneal surgery. So this is the intrastromal part of the suture and this is the superficial overlying part of the suture. To ensure that we don't break the suture as it crosses the midline, we have to make sure that the suture knot does not cross the wound margin as there is a dense fibrotic reaction as a result of the healing process. Because if the suture knot gets stuck in this fibrous tissue, the suture is bound to break when you're trying to pull it out or when you're trying to remove it. And broken sutures are bad news for the patient because it causes a lot of irritation when the patient blinks or it acts as a conduit for infection. We incise the suture in the overlying part away from the knot and then we pull out the overlying limb from this side where the knot lies and we eventually pull the suture out from this side itself. So the suture is pulled out from the same side where the knot is. Let's demonstrate this in the video in real time. Why this cataract surgery has so many sutures on the main wound is a topic for another video but let's focus on the correct technique for suture removal. So I'm going to take a 31 gauge bent needle which is very atraumatic for the cornea. All the suture knots that you will see in this case are buried inside the clear cornea and not inside the sclera. So with my 31 gauge bent needle, I go underneath the overlying limb of the suture and break it on the scleral side away from the knot. From the knot side, I pull out the overlying limb and then I pull the suture out with the McPherson forceps from the clear cornea. Let's try this on the other side. What's important is that you insert the needle in a bevel up fashion so that the sharp edge can be used to cut the overlying limb of the suture. So this concludes the demonstration of the correct technique for corneal suture removal in a very atraumatic way. Thanks for watching and if you have any questions I'll take them in the comment section below.